Hello everybody, this is Dr. Christopher White and in this presentation we're going to continue looking at igneous rocks. So this video is going to correspond to section 5.10 of your textbook. So let's begin looking at convergent plate boundaries. So convergent plate boundaries are an important location for the generation of magma and they account for approximately 20% of all magma produced. So we can see on the slide here we have a picture of an ocean-ocean convergent plate boundary. So we have two pieces of oceanic, oceanic crust converging towards each other. Now we've already discussed in the past how one piece of oceanic crust will be pushed down into the mantle. This is the subducting plate. Now we know that around 150 kilometers down, the minerals in our subducting plate will begin to dewater. They will lose water. And the water that's released will interact with the mantle rocks above the subducting slab. So these mantle rocks will find themselves being made essentially unstable by the addition of the water. So we've already covered this. So this is hydration or flux melting. So if you imagine that our mantle rocks, which are located right here, are point E. Well, normally the solidus under dry conditions would be right here. So E would be located in the solid field. Everything would be fine. Great. However, the addition of the water, which is going to be the flux in this case, is going to destabilize the mantle rocks. And so it's going to cause the solidus to shift from this location to this location marked by the dashed line. Well, now all of a sudden, rock E suddenly finds itself in the liquid field and it's going to start melting. So at this particular point, we have mantle, uh, magma being generated from the melting of mantle rocks. So we're going to produce a mafic magma. Now this mafic magma is going to rise up through the mantle, it's going to go into the crust and it's going to form volcanoes at the surface. Done. However, there is a slight problem that we need to address. So down here, we know we're producing mafic magma. However, the magma that comes out of the volcanoes here is intermediate. So clearly something is happening during the magma's journey from here to here. So what could be going on? Well, we know that our mafic magma is going to be quite hot, temperature of around 1200 degrees Celsius. Now, the oceanic crust, on the other hand, is made up of the rocks basalt and gabbro, and these are mafic igneous rocks, and their melting point is going to sit somewhere between 1000 and 1200 degrees Celsius. So, once again, we have ourselves a situation where we have a magma whose temperature is above the melting point of the rocks with, with which it is interacting. So this means that as this magma with a temperature of around 1200 Celsius begins to either pool at the base of the, uh, the uh, oceanic crust or begins to move through the oceanic crust, it's going to start to partially melt the basalts and gabbros that make up the oceanic crust. So the question then becomes, what minerals are going to start melting? Well, obviously, the minerals that are going to start melting are the minerals that have the lowest melting point in the oceanic crust. So that's going to be things like plagioclase, but it's also going to be minerals which are present in very small quantities. So things like maybe um, potassium feldspar, which may be present in very, very small amounts in the basalt, will start to melt out. And if there's any minerals like quartz or volcanic glass within the oceanic crust, that will also start to be destabilized by the heat and it will also begin to melt. So the melting of these phases, the plagioclase, any potassium phases like potassium feldspar, and any quartz phases which are very rich in silica, which are typically present in quite small amounts, will begin to melt and that melt will begin to interact with the basaltic magma, this mafic magma that we have here. And so by adding the sodium and the potassium and the silicon and the aluminum from these melting minerals from the oceanic crust to the mafic magma, which is quite rich in calcium, iron and magnesium, we end up forming a hybrid magma. And so that starts to drive the magma composition from the mafic field into the intermediate field. And so this means that the magmas which are being erupted at the surface are going to be uh, intermediate in composition rather than mafic. So this is another situation where we have magma being produced that's rising up. And here we have a situation where we have uh, melting related to heating produced by the passage of the magma through the crust. 
So what's the situation with ocean continent convergent plate boundaries? Well, it's the same basic situation. We have our piece of oceanic crust subducting down here. We're coming down to about 150 kilometers. And then once again, the water starts to leave the minerals which make up the subducting oceanic crust. That water enters the mantle rocks, it destabilizes them, and it causes them to melt due to hydration or flux melting. Once again, we end up producing a mafic magma. That mafic magma starts to rise through the mantle and eventually it interacts with the continental crust. Now, once again, just like the volcanic islands, which we were just looking at for the ocean-ocean convergent boundary, the magma that's erupted at the surface is not a mafic magma. The composition, the magma that's going to be erupted up here is going to be either felsic or intermediate. So how are those magmas being produced? Well, once again, we know it's because of the heat from the mafic magma. Once again, the mafic magma here is about 1,200 degrees Celsius. The continental crust, which is made up of granite or granite-like rocks, has a melting point of somewhere between 750 and 1,000 degrees Celsius. So once, they, you know, once, these continent, once these continental rocks come into contact with this very hot magma, they are going to begin melting. And so sometimes you can end up with a melt that's produced exclusively from the melting of continental crust. That's going to produce a felsic magma. And sometimes you can produce a magma that's a mixture of the melted continental crust and some of the mafic magma produced down here. And that's going to give us an intermediate composition. And so this helps to explain once again how we end up with these uh, different magmas being erupted onto the surface of the earth versus the magma that's created down here uh, at 150 kilometers depth. So here we go, here's our mafic magma being formed. It rises up, our mafic magma interacts with the crust and it produces a, a magma that's either going to be felsic if it's exclusively produced by the melting of the continental crust or a hybrid magma, which is going to be our intermediate magma, which is going to be a mixture of the felsic magma and the mafic magma combined. So how does the water get into the subduction zone in the first place? Well, there's a couple of ways that water is present in the oceanic crust. The first way is that the water is present actually as water in cracks and pores in the oceanic crust. The other location of water in the oceanic crust is as part of the lattice of minerals within the oceanic crust. So let's think of the water that's located in the pore spaces. Well, the water that's located in the pore spaces is going to be squeezed out relatively quickly as the rock gets compressed and heated. So obviously the, the pressure which uh, the rock begins, the, the oceanic crust begins to suffer as it enters the subduction zone is going to start reducing the amount of pore space. That's going to start squeezing this water out. And at the same time, the temperature is going to start ramping up. And so this water is very quickly going to exit the subducting oceanic crust. Now, that means most of the water that's released from the oceanic crust down here is due to the water being released from minerals. So what's happening down here? Well, at around 150 kilometers, all these water bearing minerals suddenly start to find themselves becoming unstable. They don't like the high pressures and temperatures experienced down here. And so the thing to do at that point is to metamorphose. So they turn into a new mineral, which is stable at 150 kilometers depth. That's perfectly normal. Now, the problem is, is that when they convert from the original mineral to the new mineral, the new mineral is typically going to be anhydrous. It's going to be a mineral which does not contain water in its crystal lattice. So this means you're taking a mineral that did contain water and you're turning it into a mineral that doesn't contain water. So obviously something's got to happen to the water that's released. And the water that's released, as we've discussed, has to interact with something. So it interacts with the mantle rocks here, destabilizes them and causes them to melt. So it's a relatively straightforward process. And then, of course, we know that our mafic magma is going to rise up and it's going to interact with either the continental or the oceanic crust. And its composition is going to change slightly uh, as it interacts with those two different types of rock. So the final type of boundary we're dealing with is a continent continent convergent plate boundary. So in this situation, we have two pieces of continental crust converging on each other. And of course, we know that continental crust is naturally quite buoyant. And so it's not going to want to subduct. So that means these two pieces of crust are just going to plow headlong into each other. 
So what's going to happen in this situation? Well, you'll notice in this model, here's one piece of oceanic crust there, and here is the other piece here. And you'll notice that this piece of oceanic crust is being forced under the other piece. This is sometimes referred to as underfrosting. So this overriding plate is going over the top of this plate. Now, this isn't subduction because the continental crust never enters the mantle. Let's make that clear right now. All we have is we have a piece of continental crust that's just being pushed underneath another piece of continental crust. So what's this going to do? Well, all of a sudden, this piece of continental crust that's made of granite, remember melting point between about 750 and 1000 degrees Celsius, is suddenly going to find itself being pushed downwards into an environment which is a lot hotter. Now, obviously, we know that there is also going to be an increase in pressure as it gets pushed down, but the increase in temperature is more rapid than the increase in pressure. And so as this piece of continental crust gets pushed down a little bit, it starts getting exposed to higher temperatures. The pressure can't quite keep up with those higher temperatures. And so what ends up happening is some of the continental crust starts to melt. And of course, when it starts to melt, it's going to end up producing a felsic magma as part of that process. And so what's going to happen is this felsic magma is going to rise, it's going to enter the overriding plate, and typically it will get stuck in the overriding plate and it will never make it to the surface. So this helps to explain why the uh, continent continent convergent plate boundaries which we have on the surface of the earth are very very volcano poor because there's no magma being made down here anymore at 150 kilometers that stopped because subduction has finished and the magma that's being produced here hardly ever makes it to the surface so there's nothing to feed a volcano at the surface being formed here either and so this obviously means that we have you know a pretty volcano free environment now these felsic in these felsic magmas here will obviously cool and crystallize underground and they end up forming very very large granite intrusions all right that's it everybody thank you for watching this presentation and have a good day